Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. As we receive God's servant for this hour, Apostle Joshua Selman, come on, media house, can you put the bio right there? Apostle Joshua Selman is the president of Eternity Network International, ENI, a Christian-based organization headquartered in Abuja, Nigeria. He is the set man of the weekly service called Koinonia. Widely known for his sincere love and passion for the body of Christ, his meetings are characterized by great and unusual presence and moves of the Holy Spirit, miracles, healings, signs and wonders, working of miracles and deliverances. Apostle Selman is a carrier of the strange presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The teachings of Apostle Selman are timely, anointed and balanced. They have become a major tool for revival in the lives of individuals and ministries in many nations of the world. Kindly note that Apostle Joshua Selman has not published any books and while Apostle Joshua Selman Nemak is not on any social media platforms as a person, you can feel free to tag the following accounts. Facebook, Koinonia Global. Instagram, Koinonia Abuja. With a Jesus ovation, let's make welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Amen. So that we do not break the flow. It's been a wonderful atmosphere since I stepped into this place. And um, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, I want to start by giving this honor to our Father. Thank you for the honor of introducing me. Thank you so much. Let's honor the Bishop. Blessings to you, sir, in the name of Jesus. And one last time, I want to honor a dear friend and brother, Reverend Julian. Thank you for making this happen. I love you from the depth of my heart. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Please help me bless Apostle Grace Lubega, incredible man of God. Thank you. I love you. May God bless you. Incredible work for the kingdom in Uganda. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I honor Her Excellency. Thank you so much for your presence. And please allow me to stand on the existing protocol so that we conserve time. Can we lift our hands to heaven and just give him praise for this atmosphere tonight? Go ahead and bless him one last time. Thank him for the mighty things that are already happening. Thank him for his word. Thank you. The final day of the feast, Jesus spoke and said, everyone who thirsts, let him come, let him come, let him come. Bless our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated if you can. I just want to explain something then I give my charge um, for tonight. There are three supernatural events in the New Testament that happen on account of the unity of the saints. Um, I'm trying to bring perspective and definition to the move of the spirit we just experienced right now and I believe it's ongoing. It's important that we have spiritual understanding as to what um, the Lord is saying through these mighty miracles three supernatural events happen in the Bible in the New Testament on account of the unity of the saints number one is found in Acts chapter 2 the Bible says and when the day of Pentecost was fully come that they were gathered together in one accord one accord suddenly the Bible says there was 
a sound of a mighty rushing wind it came and filled the house and when you go to verse 4 the Bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it came and sat upon each one of them verse 3 now says and they were filled with the Holy Ghost verse 4 now says and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance even though it was the day of Pentecost the Bible says on account of their unity are we together now there was a mighty rushing wind and every one of them was a beneficiary of that experience that immediately brought a dispensation to an end and it began the dispensation of the spirit on account of the unity of the saints number two is found in acts chapter 4 acts chapter 4 when you read from verse 23 i wish we had the time acts chapter 4 from verse 23 the Bible says, and being let go, the apostles now, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. Uh -huh. It says, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice, not his voice, their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hath made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of your servant has said why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing next verse please the kings of the earth and so on and so forth 27 the bible says for of a truth against thy holy child jesus whom thou hast anointed both herod and pontius pilate with the gentiles and the people of israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. 29. We're reading to 33. And now, Lord, he says, this was a united people praying. Behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. The Bible says when they had prayed together in unity, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began and they spake the word of God with boldness. 32, it says, And the multitude of them that were believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither did any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. As a result, great power was made available in their midst. They were already anointed, but the Bible says with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon how many of them? All, not some. Great grace was upon them all. The implication of a united people. The third supernatural event that happened in the New Testament on account of unity is found in Acts chapter 16. We read from verse 25. The Bible tells us that Paul and Silas, remember when they casted the devil out of the damsel? They were taken to jail. And the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas, not Paul or Silas, not Paul alone and then Silas later. Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. The Bible does not tell us the prisoners joined them, but they had a right to fight them. That they kept quiet is safe to assume that they were in agreement with whatever was going on in that prison. Are we together? Then the Bible says suddenly there was a great earthquake. The implication of unity so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately i like this all doors were opened and everyone's band was loosed those who prayed and those who supported the prayer experienced the miracle the bible says everyone's band not the band of those who were praying and singing those who supported connecting with one heart when the miracle arrived everyone in that prison was a beneficiary of that move of the spirit 27 and the keeper of the prison 
awaking out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm. I like what he said. Back up to verse 28, please. For we are all here. The language of unity. We are all here. We are still together. We are still intact. 29. It says, He called for light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. 30 now. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now you imagine the kind of harvest. When you read on, you would see that that man was saved. His household was saved because of the power of unity. I just wanted to tell us this, that there is no limit to what happens in an atmosphere where a people are connected genuinely in one accord. In one accord. In one accord. Do you see how easy it is to see the power of God flow? Now, this is very difficult because uh, there's a mentality that I'm praying that God would deliver us from. We always want to be the faces behind many moves of God. And we're not as interested in God moving as it is that our face be captured in that experience. Are we together now? Notice that when Jesus healed the sick, the trouble was not the healing. The trouble was the person who healed. They had a problem with the fact that the healing came through Jesus. And they began to question the man, giving all kinds of flimsy excuses. But in an atmosphere where there's unity, there's connectedness in heart, let me tell you the truth. Anyone, whether the praise and worship leader, even before the man of God mounts the stage, you carry this revelation to your churches. And right from the opening prayer, you will watch people lift up their crutches. Everybody becomes a partaker of what God is doing. This becomes an antidote to the superstar Christianity that is destroying sometimes men of God because when the attention shifts to just one person, he becomes an endangered species. God's design was never supposed to be for a people to be gathered and then helplessly wait for Joshua Selman or Reverend Julian or Apostle Grace Lubega or every one man of God to now come and that their arrival signifies the arrival of the miraculous. Now there are gifts that God has given to help the body but it is everyone's heritage in Christ. This is what I want you to understand. Are we together now? That the goal, the, 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 there's a message that came from this mighty move of God. That every one of us, the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. I'm saying this so that some man of God somewhere would not think that this is just because there are some spectacular men of God. It is a reality that can be yours if you believe. It's a reality that can work in your life here and now. Whether at Rema Feast or you take it to your churches, take it to your homes most of the people who were healed today have believers in their homes and you can take it as a challenge are we together now i just needed to charge our hearts that it is important for us to know that the same holy spirit in our father the bishop reverend julian apostle selman apostle grace and every man of god that is the same spirit of god in you the difference is the advantage that one has taken are we together now taking advantage of the resources of the spirit and has made profit out of it the bible says he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents he gave unto one one talent the common thing in that story is to everyone he gave something but one took a responsibility and made 10 out of 5, 2 out of 2, and the other one kept that one talent. There are many people wasting the investment of the Holy Spirit upon their lives while they admire others who have the same Holy Spirit, not knowing that they can be guided into an experience that at the end of it, there will be men and women of power. Power was not designed to be for men of God. It is the heritage of the saints in light. Are we together now? This is an orientation that every believer must have. It matters that you know what it means to be a believer. A believer is beyond a churchgoer. 
a believer is beyond a congregant a believer is beyond a helpless person waiting for a man of god to bring healing to bring deliverance now don't get me wrong there are prayers that have been you know prayer requests here and we will pray we will do our due diligence as gifts and priests but god's goal is not to keep having a helpless congregation wait helplessly over a man of god the gifts were supposed to prepare the body that a time will come where we will attain unto a stature in the spirit where the least of us will do the things we now celebrate the least of us that you can go to a mall to shop and see someone deaf on one ear and say please do you mind that i pray for you and in one moment the ear pops open and it's, it's so casual because of your consistency you shop and you go back this is the kind of standard that God is lifting over the church. You believe that? Shout Amen. 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 So why does God put together conferences like this and brings these graces? So that through the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit, that which is already in you is activated, stirred up. Are we together now? Yes. You are provoked unto godliness. You return back. And there is an anger in your spirit the same lord is rich unto all and you begin to pray you begin to build capacity he's called me to be a believer he's called listen the call to be a believer is nobler than the call to be an apostle or a pastor because you have to be a believer before you occupy that gift and it is for the purpose of the believers that these gifts have been given who is understanding me so far it's very important Look at your hands and believe that these are extensions of the hands of Jesus. They are not just ordinary hands. You have to believe this. Indoctrinate yourself. Get to a point where you realize that you may fail alone, but you and the Holy Spirit cannot fail. You and the Word of God cannot fail. Are we together now? You don't have to be in ministry. If we don't teach this, our pulpits will be full of people who are not supposed to be there. We need to let people know that this is the heritage of the saints in light. It has nothing to do with holding a mic. It has nothing to do with being invited and sitting in front. That the same Lord is rich unto all. You can carry this revelation. Are we together now? And go as an extension of the life, the power, the wisdom of the spirit to the marketplace, to your rooms, to your schools and begin to replicate the life of God. This is true. Don't leave this place just celebrating unusual men of God. Now, there's a place for honor. I taught you that. But if all you see is God moving through Joshua Selman, if all you see is God moving through Reverend Kula, Apostle Grace Lubega, another man of God, you did not get the whole counsel of God. We have come as models by grace and mercy, showing you what your life ought to be if you step into a higher level of light showing you not intimidating you as models who is understanding me this is my message that we have come as those helped by god by the privilege of the election of grace and through the sacrifice of alignment we are modeling for you before your face a possibility that is the heritage of all saints in light that it is not unique the name apostle does not add anything if you do not believe it becomes an embarrassing title you carry it is revelation that gives you defense to that name are we together we have come as models modeling for you the possibilities that can happen in your church modeling for you the possibilities that can happen in your ministry are we together so that if ultimately you see transformation is based on two laws number one looking unto jesus he is a perfect model but number two following them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise 
who has understood me so far that transformation is difficult without a reference that is the reason why God samples a few people in honor to their sacrifice of alignment and he creates models out of them so that the body of believers can see when God says pray consistently he uses a man who has prayed consistently to show you what you can become if you walk in obedience when God says contend for revelation he brings a man who has gone past that realm and shows you he personifies his desire in men so that when you watch them you are provoked to become ultimately we look on to Jesus are we together now but then we look at the models it's important I say this the body of Christ is in big trouble today because we have over celebrated men and sometimes to the detriment of the health of the average believer and we men of God sometimes it's embarrassing but I must admit that sometimes we like it so the more the congregants become helpless and they look on to us we become demigods the trouble is because of that godlike standard we inconvenience ourselves put ourselves in trouble and when our humanity acts out we are so embarrassed because we've given them an impression that we are so we are demigods for, for, for want of word. Your safety is in your ability to raise ordinary people to that godlike class. Are we together now? That leadership in the kingdom is a privilege where you have to model the possibilities that God intends to be for all men, not some men, all men, all men. So when you come to Rima first, you are not seeing a man you should idolize called Reverend Kula. You are seeing a model of what the wisdom of God can be. Are we together now? That if for any reason you read your Bible and see that there is something called the wisdom of the just. If you did not understand your Bible study, God tells you come to Rima first and see an individual who personifies what I mean by a man carrying the wisdom of God. So what you should learn here for every man of God, including the one speaking to you. I was so touched when I saw our father, you know, come to introduce me quite honestly it was just to to honor protocol else i would have just walked up to say please save baba the trouble it's a principle i always check balance when honor delves to human worship and it is something every man of god must check there is a healthy zone where honor remains and it becomes profitable when it goes outside of that jurisdiction it delves into human worship and when you get to that point you become an enemy of the cross you don't have to be fake to be an enemy of the cross I'm saying this so that some young man in ministry does not leave this conference carrying a motivation to arrange people who introduces you and does a lot of things it's amazing what people learn in conferences like this I hope you are not embarrassed so far <laughs> So what do you see when you look at our father, the bishop? What do you see when you look at Reverend Kula? What do you see when you look at Joshua Selman? What do you see when you look at Apostle Grace Lubega? What do you see when you look at Pastor Poju? What do you see when you see every vessel that was used? If you see an idol, then repent. If you see a model, you got it right if you see a vessel yielded you got it right if you see a believer who is demonstrating for you here and now the possibilities of the spirit life under the atmosphere of alignment then you are learning well it matters what you see the apostle said look on us look on us he says silver and gold i do not have in truth it's an embarrassing reality but there are certain things we must admit that we do not have for instance the ability to be sufficient in ourselves every manifestation of the Christ that happens through his vessel is because of our partnership with the spirit of grace and our partnership with the word who understands this so far so as you return back to your churches as you return back to your businesses when God begins to lift you be intentional about letting people know that the goal is not to be an idol but to be a model the goal is not to be an idol the goal is to be 
a model the goal is not to be an idol when i honor our father the bishop it is not idolatry he has modeled for us what longevity in ministry can be he has given us the younger ones hope that you can do ministry with integrity and you can last and because he has modeled that possibility we honor him as touching that sacrifice in the spirit are we together when you sow into the life of any man of god or you see what god is doing in the life of any man of god you should be provoked unto godliness to take advantage of the resources of the holy spirit the resources of the world are we together now the resources of prayer and mold yourself into a version that becomes a worthy ambassador of the kingdom if that becomes your orientation then conferences like this will profit you but if the only thing you get is admiration worship intimidation and anger then at the end of it you would have wasted time do you understand me so far so for every time you clap make sure you are clapping because you are seeing jesus revealed in a man make sure you clap because you are seeing a model someone who tells you prayerlessness can die god personifies his possibilities in men are we together now it is important that's why i have profound respect for every vessel that has come here and let me charge particularly men of god or those who have tasted of a level of success remain intentionally humble and teach the people that watch you to look beyond you to jesus you will be helping a generation when you drum that template otherwise the generation that is coming will die naturally out of pride it's a human thing to want self-glory it's a human thing to want self-exaltation but this is what has cut short the destiny of many we look to yahweh yahweh forever yahweh yahweh we look to yahweh yahweh forever yahweh that is a years ago the lord spoke to me and he said if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you if you will let men see me if you learn how to hide behind the cross and let people see jesus i dread being an idol to anyone and when i find out i'm not ashamed to let you know that my sufficiency is not of myself it is of Christ who has made us able ministers. If you are ever blessed by any life, it is because of the investment of the Spirit at work in ordinary men who otherwise would not sustain that intelligence, that power, that grace. Who is understanding me so far? I'm taking the time to share this so that you will live challenged. Are we together? That what you came to see was the power, the grace, the wisdom of God that has been modeled through men, ordinary in themselves, but now invincible through the investment of the Spirit. So that for anyone who comes to get saved here, you know that after a while, walking with God, you can be turned into the same model you are seeing. There should be many Apostle Grace Lubegas in Kenya rising as they watch him as they drink you should not drink and remain a member you should drink and graduate from a member to a believer to a transformed believer to a witness only witnesses can defend the purposes of god it's important that that transition happens that anyone who looks on to reverend kula within kenya are we together now you can see that this man has exemplified the wisdom of christ that a man can carry the nehemiah anointing you can build lives build systems and build structures now that you've seen that model you know that it is possible and you can press 
transformation is difficult without a reference so when god wants to help a generation he looks for men who become the models of his possibilities are we together and scatters them across every horizon and he refers a generation to look to those men he says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him in other words if you want to know what it means to be blessed and to be a blessing i refer you to an authorized model called abraham abraham is god's idea god's portrait of a blessed man your assignment is that through the course of your lifetime you walk with god in such a way that your life becomes a model to a dimension of God did you get what I said that throughout your lifetime you introduce a dimension of God that has not been seen and has not been known that you personify such a possibility of God to a generation that we can know God gives speed not just by reading it in the Bible but looking at a life that has trapped that reality in the name of Jesus Christ and so we bless God for everything that he's done I needed to bring this because I sensed in my spirit that many times when believers are in an atmosphere where God is doing great and mighty things sometimes they do not discern the signs they do not discern the signs and that which the Holy Spirit is doing becomes wasted because our attention stays focused on men not to provoke us onto godliness but sometimes it graduates to human worship and i'm praying because god is in the business of purifying models and presenting and so we must trust god to dot the i's cross the t's that the mistakes that have been made by those who have gone ahead of us we obtain grace to correct so that we will last and we will be models that are worthy enough for a generation to emulate you believe that Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What happened? Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I see. I'm wondering what is making them shout. Okay, so let's go to John 17. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John chapter 17. My final session will be on the Lord's Prayer. I want to show us a prayer that Jesus prayed for the church. Because every time Jesus prays for you, you listen to what he said about you. The Lord's Prayer. John chapter 17. Jesus prayed a very special prayer for the church. This was Jesus on his way, wrapping up his assignment upon the earth. And the Bible makes it very clear. This was the most concise capture of the prayer of Jesus. Um, theologically, we call Matthew 6 the Lord's Prayer, and that's all right. But that was him teaching the disciples how to pray. This was the chapter in the Bible where he actually prayed. And the Bible opens us up to the content of his prayer. Initially, it began like just a conversation, but when we get to verse 9, we know that he was praying. Are we together? So let's consider that for a moment. If the Lord is helping you, say amen. amen. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many that thou hast given him go very quickly to verse 11 please for sake of time 11 and now Jesus is praying I am no more in the world <laughs> isn't that amazing that he's praying there and he's saying I'm no more in the world but these are in the world and I come to thee holy father he says keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me let's read the last sentence together one to read that they may be one as we are one one more time that they may be one one last time 
that they may be one now please jump to verse 22 or verse 20 we'll do 20 to 22 john 17 verse 20 now neither pray i for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word 21 that they all may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me final verse 22 and the glory which thou gavest me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one the lord bless his word in jesus name so jesus prayed for the unity of the church it, it seemed to be a deep burden that he carried in his heart you would imagine among the many things that he had to talk about he emphasized to the father his desire to see the church attain in experience the kind of oneness that he enjoyed are we together now with the father he said that they may be one that they taste of that oneness and the power that is contained in that oneness in first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 paul the apostle is speaking now mentoring the church in corinth first corinthians 10 and verse 1 here's what he says now i beseech thee brethren by the name of our lord jesus christ that ye all speak the same thing he says and that there be no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment i believe that in my lifetime that before jesus returns that the church will attain a level of unity and oneness as has never been seen in modern history this i believe if jesus prayed that prayer for the church then there is an answer that a generation must deliver because if jesus prays that prayer will be answered and there has to be a generation that will come into alignment that this prayer as ancient as it is the prayer to be one the emphasis to be one the burden that was in the heart of jesus before he departed he prayed that all the resources that needed to be in place for the church to attend that state of unity and oneness that it be supplied the saints and i believe and i pray that will be that generation that will be able to reveal the oneness of the kingdom and the power that is contained the power that is embodied within the church when we attain that state of oneness you believe that shout amen, amen. the church as we know in africa europe america and several parts of the world has attained a level of commendable spiritual results and we i must start by you know appreciating the investment of god's grace upon the church but the one area i believe that's why god put that burden in the heart of his servant the one area where the church has been found wanting for many years is in the area of unity and i hope to give perspective to this i addressed an issue yesterday morning remember the spirit of envy please let me recommend that you get that teaching and listen again listen again listen again is a message that gives light to the body the cancer of envy are we together now we're looking at the Lord's Prayer standing as a generation to see this desire that was in the heart of Jesus fulfilled even in our lifetime and as a charge I want to share with you a few keys that I call enhancers, enhancers to unity, enhancers of unity, that it is possible for the believer corporately to step into that realm of unity and that there are a few factors, a few keys in the spirit that if we lay hold of, we can attain to that state where we become a united people yesterday when reverend julian was giving us the the commonwealth uh, presentation i was so blessed and i was so humbled and he shared something that i've known for many years but he brought a light to it that blessed me he began to give us a little discourse on how goods are transferred right from the farm 
up until the final consumer and it occurred to me how many programs our ignorance has funded that is against the purposes of Christ are we together that literally the way a believer does business can fund the program of God or frustrates the counsel of God that it is not just sin that can become an enemy to God's program ignorance can cause you to participate with darkness in frustrating the advancement of the kingdom until now we believe or we have been taught that the only thing that frustrates the program of God is sin and then demons now we are learning that even where sin is not there and where demons are not there the program of God can still be frustrated through the ignorance of the saints so I learned very powerfully that wealth can be recycled within a system and this was the apostolic model that was given to the believers and on account of that the Bible says neither did any one of them lack because they created a system that insisted that a value chain went round and everyone within that system benefited do you know that there are systems the sons of the born woman is still a model that they use in any nation as soon as they get into that nation they don't care who arrives first they don't care who is most successful they use the presence of the most successful person as the compass that begins to multiply their relevance within that territory are we together I was very humbled knowing that a lot of the auditoriums that we use for programs in Europe, many of them are being bought over right now. Bought over and church activities and crusades are being banned in those venues. So there are venues that no matter how wealthy you think you are, you cannot be allowed to hold any Christian program there again because they have considered the church as a nuisance to society and a nuisance to civilization. And you will be surprised to know that those who bought that property did not have the money, but they had the power of a united people. It didn't matter who bought it. It was not about the individual. It was about the program that bought it, the agenda that bought it, the philosophy that bought it. Are we together now? And so I want to share with you, hoping that these truths will bring us to a greater sense of oneness, that the church in Kenya, by this church, in addition to all we've heard, will attain unto a greater state of oneness. I can tell you this for certain. We have no idea the dimension of wisdom and power and grace that will be released by the church when we attain the state of oneness. For starters, the Bible says one will chase a thousand. Is that still in your Bible? Then it says two will put 10,000 to flight. Now you look at that ratio. That when you bring another person to partner with one, the result is not double. The result is not triple. If one chases a thousand and two puts 10,000 to flight, then 10 would put how many to flight? Then a nation of like-minded believers it then means certain dimensions of darkness should not prevail within our society and i'm not just speaking spiritually economically politically the church should be such an indomitable invincible force that every territory must come to terms with the fact that god is alive in the midst of his people and not by fanatism no not by fanatism by the wisdom of the spirit understanding the power of community the power of unity i taught you yesterday that jesus was teaching and he taught us how strong men are bound he says every kingdom divided against itself shall not stand then he says if you want to plunder a man's house the first thing is verify the strength that he has and i taught you that that strength jesus was talking about was the unity of that house a united city is a strong city a united people are a strong people if you doubt me learn from the ants when it has to do with building it doesn't matter which of the ants build they work as a united people the Bible teaches us to learn from them and yet we have refused to learn there is a formula from those creatures that can become a weapon to the end time church the power of unity 
no matter how great you are as a single entity there is a limit to what you can do are we together God is bringing us to realms in the church and seasons in the church where we will be secured enough to hide our individualism and project a united body a united body may be nameless there is only one name that matters the name of Jesus every other supporting name agrees to diminish that that name of Jesus will be projected so that we are able to come with our various dimensions and form one united army indomitable invincible this is the kind of army that will return the Christ there is no single denomination that has within its power the capacity to birth the revival we are talking about. It cannot be given to an individual. We will only exhaust our creativity, anointings and everything and still fall short. Daddy, do you know that there are about 8.2 billion people there about counting Christians, I mean, across the globe now, inhabitants. But there are just a little above 2.6 billion professing Christians this is plus backsliders and those who just answered the register Christian we're not talking of serious Christian 2.6 billion regardless the conferences regardless the replications of churches and I say this with every sense of responsibility regardless the programs regardless the advantage of the internet please look up how old is Facebook how old is Twitter? How old are all of these applications and these social media platforms? Some of them are not even up to 20 years. And yet an idea was promoted that vetoed tribe, vetoed culture. People may fight together, but when they get online, they agree. How did the social media platform look beyond the individual, uh, you know, uh, uh, limitations and biases and created a system that binds all men? online it doesn't matter whether you are from kenya or nigeria are we together now and yet the church has not been able to bring itself and its forces and its resources together even though we claim that we are promoting the same vision is it true that the church in kenya is that poor is it true that the church in nigeria the church in America, the church in UK is that limited that to fund a kingdom program, people will have to tilt towards the corridors of compromise. Is that not an embarrassment to our identity? We shout Jesus, we shout the Holy Spirit, we shout the word, but we are not able to translate these spiritual realities to a context that forces society to see the dominion of the saints in light. The key is not our inefficiencies as individuals by the grace of god we have gone past that realm when you vet and mark the script of the average man of god and the average denomination in all fairness we are doing well but the job is not being done because it requires a united army not just effective members there is a dimension of weakness that no matter how effective Joshua Selman is, I will fall short of it. Because the weight of revival, the weight of the move of God cannot be hosted on just one shoulder. No matter how aligned, no matter how yielded, it is hand joined in hand. Are we together? Together as a united army, we become invincible. And I'm praying tonight that in the name of Jesus, let this come as a clarion call that will be comfortable enough that there will be strategic kingdom collaborations from nation to nation, from continent to continent, across ministries, across businesses that will frontier the program of God with greater energy, greater efficiency. You believe that? Shout Amen. Now please be seated. Let me rush. Who is getting blessed? Number one, the first enhancer of unity at any level is called vision. Vision. And by vision here, I don't just mean the picture of the future. I mean vision in terms of revelations 
and perceptions. The first enhancer of unity at any level is vision. The degree to which there is similarity in perceptions, the degree to which there is similarity in revelations will also describe the extent of cohesion between any persons. This is very serious. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, when you read verse 16 to 18, the Bible tells us that God made two great lights. Everybody say lights. He made two great lights. One to rule the day. The Bible says the other, the lesser, to rule the night. He made the stars also. 17. And God set them in the firmament to give lights upon the earth. The comforting scripture here is whether it is a greater light or lesser light, we find comfort in the fact that at least God made all of them. But the implication there is this, you see. And I confess to you that this is a very difficult thing. You cannot attain a state of unity with people when the variation in the kind of light perception that you carry is significantly different. Is someone learning now? Many of you here head Christian organizations of all sorts and you know any man of God here will know that one of the most difficult assignments of a man of God is to work with several men of God with all due respect across several denominations. The reason is because everyone is coming with their dimension of reality and sometimes the disparity becomes too wide. It becomes difficult to attain unity because unity is a product of vision. Are we together now? If on a scale of 1 to 10, a man of God has attained a state of 8, in terms of your perception about life, about ministry, are we together? About the program of God, about the word of God. And then another comes, say with level two or three. No matter how you try, you will be unequally yoked. That is the truth. Because eventually there will be too much confusion across doctrinal grounds, across perceptions in terms of organization, excellence, spiritual perceptions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know what this means? That the more we men and women of God labor to build the people to a higher state of light, it will enhance our attaining a state of unity. Because it then means that the margin of error in terms of the things we see will be greatly minimized when we grow. When we grow. I hear people say things like, "How? why wouldn't all the churches come together? Uh, I, I want that to be so, but in our current state, it will not happen. Do you know why? Because the truth is that as ministers of the gospel, our labor to understand God, the things of the spirit, and to build wisdom and superior perception, they differ. And we have sold that growth or that stuntedness to our members. So when they meet, for some, there is no basis of discussion. One person is trained to speak failure. One person is trained to speak defeat. One person is trained to never even see a possibility of a great destiny. Now you are asking that person to be united with someone who has been trained. Trained to see things from a victor standpoint. Trained to have a winner's mentality. It cannot work. You see the problem? Vision. For as long as we attain a higher level of illumination as priests to begin to communicate the accurate counsel of God, building our members so that it doesn't really matter whether it's church A or church B, there is a minimum standard of spirituality that should be experienced within a territory. The spiritual state of any territory is a reflection of the quality of spiritual voices that lead that territory. So if a territory has defeated Christians, losers, spiritually, economically, something is wrong with the content that is being served them per Sunday, per weekday, per conference. If we really mean the business of unity, then every man of God needs to humble himself, return back to the drawing board and fetch the kind of meals we are serving believers within a territory. As much as I love the body of Christ, I am jealous with a godly jealousy over those who have been committed to my care. Is someone learning now? And I will not allow anyone 
to intentionally come and destroy the pace of their growth they are becoming they are attaining they are seeing the value of the Holy Spirit the value of prayer the value of productivity and I will not allow them to mix away carelessly with thoughts that become defiant the first thing the Lord asks Eve is who told you you've exposed yourself to an information that is outside of what I told you your victory was tied to what I told you now you have opened up yourself the Bible says I fear lest as Satan beguiled Eve Eve was beguiled through words she exposed herself to an information that gave her a loser's mentality so if we are talking unity we have to go back to understand doctrine and the ways of God accuracy uh, with accuracy don't tell me to be united indefinitely I love everyone around me but if they refuse to grow they will alter the pace of growth the pace of becoming I love the body of Christ but I'm not going to give the mic to a man of God who will come and destroy the spiritual pace of growth of my people it's not about hatred it's responsibility of priests who is learning tonight so the first enhancer to unity is we must rise to a point where our perceptions our revelations our doctrinal content our understanding about God that it rises to a level a threshold level where listening to you becomes an advantage to my spiritual life that any man of God who stands on stage and preaches at least you are sure that are, the margin of error is too small you are not afraid of your member listening to another man of God not because you hate them but because you are afraid of what you have to labor correcting again this is a touchy area but it's the truth and let me submit to you I hate to say this but let me submit to you there are allocations of graces that are happening in this end time and the basis for it is the depth of your press into God and the things of the Spirit God is not going to risk placing his people under the care of servants who do not intend to grow there are nations today who have been trapped by the laziness of men of God. I'm sorry to say this. God's idea is that there be apostolic and prophetic voice across every territory that frontier the program of God. Are we together? The convictions that are prevalent in any territory are a product of the quality of the teachings that come from the altar. Africa is a very religious continent. That means if there is a widespread deviation in terms of error, in terms of irresponsibility, there is a portion of that blame that must come to the altar. When you want to change Kenya, every man of God must take responsibility and not hold on to ideas that are destructive and because of pride we would rather 20,000 people be punished as a result of our bankruptcy of light if we love Jesus and love his program so much we must go back to the drawing board and open up the scripture by light and for God's sake liberate God's people bring them to a point of liberty in Christ by teaching them sound truth doctrinal content not that you read a scripture two hours to service just find something i apologize servants of the living god i hope i'm not being too hard on you forgive me forgive me again forgive me again listen sample 10 believers 10 believers church goers put them in front here and give everyone a mic and probe their understanding across a variety of spiritual subjects you will live pain than in tears ask them what do you know about god what do you know about the holy spirit what do you know about prayer what do you know about demons what do you know about fasting what do you know about failure what do you know about success what do you know about victory what do you know about the anointing what do you know about territorial transformation at the end of your interview you will see we've been doing a bad job 
our members are our report cards yes sir our members are our report cards the kind of products we produce so if you have a corrupt person as a politician I submit to you most likely that person is a member of a church somewhere now listen carefully listen carefully if you have a corrupt businessman most likely the businessman is a member of a church somewhere if you have a champion doing great things for the kingdom most likely that champion is a member of a church somewhere this is an uncomfortable truth but if it is unity we desire men of god we need to understand the excellent position we are in a vantage position we literally can change a territory in one year by the quality of the truths that we communicate that someone came from a family full of yokes and curses and defeat and because he became your member he also becomes a winner a winner indeed by exposing them to the whole counsel of God they look forward to coming to church because the opening of your lips is a communication of wisdom 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 that transforms not people who are ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth I hate to tell you this and I hope it does not scare you but God himself is going to begin to remove people from certain circles and take them to certain circles when he came for accountability he collected the talent from the one man who was careless and did not appreciate stewardship he didn't take it back he gave it to the one who had demonstrated the use there are men of God who labor day and night. They sacrifice to make sure that every time they stand on the pulpit, they are communicating light with accuracy, liberating light. They pray and they fast not just for themselves. God is not unjust. He will not give such a person membership and give such a person growth and influence to match someone who is carelessly freelancing ministry and not being serious. God is just. He sits upon a throne that is made up of righteousness and justice. I already apologized in advance. I apologized, apologized in advance. I submit to you believers if you're a man of God here by the privilege of God's mercy let me beseech you please go back and re-examine what you are doing called ministry re-examine your sermons re-examine your programs don't feel embarrassed if you find out you are wrong we are all students in the school of the spirit but go back you will be held accountable for God's people that you mislead you will be held accountable for the consequences of your pride on God's program over a generation. That's why there are people who pray and fast, but the corruption that is in their heart, it is a risk for God to trust them with influence. It is a risk for God to trust them with access. There is a kind of wisdom they cannot find because their hearts are not malleable. They do not understand God's program. You want to see unity in Kenya? You want to see unity? It starts with the word. The quality of truths that shape the convictions of our people. It is that information they take to the banking sector. It is that information they take. If you teach them leadership, it will speak in their companies. If you teach them productivity, it will speak on those who are roaming around the streets. Are we together now? If you teach them responsibility, they will stop blaming everybody for their state and take responsibility over their lives. If you teach them to pray and the power of prayer, it will tell on their results. If you teach them that the anointing is not an exclusive reserve for men of God, they will take advantage of it. They will use the anointing in school. They will use the anointing while they are working with their colleagues. They will use it in sports. You will see a replication of what you see on the altar across society. Vision. 
you want to see unity we we have a great job to do dear men and women of god we need to catch up with this curriculum of transformation because some of us are too slow i do not believe and and forgive me but i do not believe any faithful member should sit under a pastor for two years and not be able to defend their spiritual understanding something is wrong now don't say tell them god is speaking to all of us are we together now don't say tell them we are mature people here don't say tell them and you see listen there are many younger people who are rising to complicate this error they will not learn they trivialize the sacrifices and the results that are produced from veterans in the gospel because they do not know that he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless except he strives lawfully consistency in the spirit is not luck no 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 it's an intelligent combination of the ministry of the spirit the word of god all the forces of advantage that have been made available to the believer in christ that you take advantage of it and produce an excelling life there are many defeated people even though loyal church members there are many defeated people who listen day and night and they are victims of the information they have this narrative must change if we want to see a winning body if you believe that say amen so I beseech you, dear men of God, remember, refer to my message yesterday night, the force of unity. Where you are incapacitated, humble yourself and learn. Everything that makes for excellence is learnable. Everything that makes for victory is learnable. Everything that makes a victor is learnable. If you are doing ministry the wrong way, there are enough models for you with humility to correct yourself. It is cheaper to correct yourself than to embarrass yourself. I'm not ashamed of learning anything I need to learn. I am not too big to learn. No. This, this pride has been the cancer that has destroyed unity because even for those who know they are in error, they rather remain there. The embarrassment of transformation looks too much. They would rather thousands of people get punished because of their ego. But God himself is moving across his body. He will not allow his people to be in bondage. Are we together now? And let me tell you this, dear servants of God, you want to be at the cutting edge of God's program? Forget about social media and focus on the word. You can be there from morning till night and nobody will place a demand upon the grace of God that is on your life because you need to build capacity. Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is exclusively of God. Let me hurry up. Number two, the second enhancer of unity if we want to see unity the prayer that jesus prayed that will be one is love john 13 35 love the second key that must be introduced in a rich dimension to the body of christ is love by these shall all men how many men by these shall all kenyans by this shall all Africans know that ye are my disciples, not when you preach well, not when you do business well, not just when you make profit. It says when ye have love, not towards me, one towards another. The level of sheer hatred that exists within the body of Christ needs to be tamed. We need the blood of Jesus upon the body of Christ fast, else we'll kill ourselves by ourselves pastors hating one another for various reasons and justifying hatred with scripture no sir there is no excuse for hatred businessmen hating one another no the law of love is the signature do you know the bible talks about the fullness of christ and there are three dimensions to the fullness of christ let me just do a crash course so you learn when the bible says that christ desires for his fullness to be expressed in believers there are three dimensions to the fullness of christ number one is called the nature of christ that is the first dimension of his fullness the second is called the wisdom of christ 
the ways of Christ. The third, listen carefully, is called the power of Christ, the works of Christ, the nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the works of Christ. If it finds expression in a believer, that believer is delivering the fullness of Christ. Every corruption in God's program is because one of these dimensions was emphasized above another. Is someone learning now? So there are people who emphasize what they call the nature of Christ and downplay the wisdom of Christ and downplay the power of Christ. They will produce a people who are full of piety, holy, sincere, but unproductive, mediocre because they do not have the wisdom of Christ. And there are people who have accessed the wisdom of Christ, but they did not start their journey by embracing the nature of Christ. So they have people who are wise and intelligent, system builders, but they are corrupt. No character. You do not see moral excellence, but you see exploits. And then there are those who have embraced the power of the Christ, bankrupt of the wisdom of Christ, bankrupt of the nature of Christ. You see people fall down left, right and center, but they don't build anything and they don't look like Christ. Hmm. The nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the works of Christ is a holistic capture of what the Bible calls the fullness of Christ. I said that for a reason. Let's go back to the nature of Christ. Do you know that the nature of Christ is love? The Bible says God is love. Does not say he has love. God is love. That means the zenith of a believer's transformation is not enlightenment. It's having the nature of love. You are as matured as the degree to which love has grown in you, not revelation. Revelation is not the ultimate proof of maturity. It is the nature of love. Are we together now? It says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels. Is that not in your Bible? And I have not love. I am nothing. Though I understand all mysteries. That's wisdom there. We need to let the body of Christ know and our territories know that we have attained unto maturity. Not just by sound exegesis of scripture, but the nature of love. Someone say love. One more time, say love. We need to cry out from the depths of our heart that God will return love. The level of hatred, I'm saying this again. Do you know the pain of many in the body was caused by those within the body? There are many pastors bleeding today, courtesy other pastors. There are many churches today that are struggling managing unnecessary issues because of the antagonisms that came within the body. Now in biology and in medicine, there is a disease where the immunity of an individual begins to fight the body by itself have you seen such a thing i'm not a doctor i don't know the name forgive me autoimmune something what's it called god bless you doctor are we together now that you can by yourself your body begins to fight yourself most of those patients die this is what is happening in the body we hug ourselves in the open and sharpen the knives and give orders to help kill one another and like I said yesterday we come back saying why are you bleeding as though we are unconnected to the blood may God bring us to times where our hugs become genuine our greetings become genuine when you say God bless you you really mean it where a man of God can be organizing a program and another man of God will say I just paid maybe a thousand dollars for bosses it's not my program but i'm just sowing because it is about jesus I, I don't know you we may not agree doctrinally but let this be my contribution i'm praying for kenya like i pray for nigeria like i pray for south africa ghana europe all over africa that servants of the living god and the body of christ will become that matured we may differ here and there i agree we may not agree in everything, but it's too small a reason for the kind of hatred we are selling. And the trouble is that we are mentoring a generation after the order of our hatred. So anything I hate, whoever comes from me must hate it too. That is the proof of sonship. Oh dear. There's a catastrophe on its way to happen. 
if we do not change from this there are young people fighting battles they have no business fighting they fight those battles in loyalty to those they believe they honor and then later on the mentor repents quietly and leaves the sons to continue the consequences of their foolishness let me charge you listen young people who are in ministry listen to me make sure the person you are following is following Christ did you hear what I said make sure the person you are learning from is learning Christ look at two people before you follow the one in front of you and who the, the person in front of you is looking at if he's looking at something else politely without fighting without tearing him be on your way and look for Jesus genuinely so you don't waste your journey are we together love love that we can greet ourselves where are you going to church oh please greet your pastor for me yes i know i don't believe in what you are teaching necessarily but it's too small a reason god bless you we see later on not this church these people they are all this there no stop it stop it stop it isn't it amazing how people fight in office because of church fight everywhere because of church where are you from i'm from this place okay that's it it's as if they are infected with some virus stop it i'm telling you this you will never win when you hate it is love that never fails 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 pastors let me tell you the truth no matter how exclusive you are or you think you are is the same heaven we are going to so i don't know what is going to happen to us when we get there <laughs> i pray my seat is close to reverend julian and apostle grace lubega <laughs> We act as if there is a unique heaven created for... No. Let me tell you this. Most of this hatred is not a spiritual issue. It's a product of wounded childhood. You believe me on this. We only spiritualize it and make church the template. It's not true. Most hatred... It is wounded people that wound others. When you have been healed most of the hatred in church is not just about prayer you need to study if you were wounded because of your background don't wound others now that you are an adult stay with god and be healed so that you stop wounding others number three Number three, number three, number three. We have, this is our last session. Are you ready for number three? Yes. Enhancers of unity. This is a prayer that Jesus himself prayed that will be one. And I've come as a privileged vessel to show you how we can partner with the spirit to make this prayer answered. Number one, vision that comes by growth. We need to contend for growth. There are many things we are seeing that we are not seeing correctly. Son of man, what seest thou? The rod of an almond tree. And he says, thou hast seen correctly. There are many sincere people who are not seen correctly. We need to trust God to wash our eyes with eyes salve so that we can see accurately. Number two, love. Love. I'm praying that after this conference, someone will send a text to some brother, some sister, some man of God, even though the person has five members, and just say, I want to tell you that I love you. Our churches are neighbors. There's no point fighting. We're all preaching Jesus. Don't frown when you see my members going to church. I won't frown when I see your members going to church. The most important thing is that we preach Jesus. I love you. Our results may not be the same. Don't be confused about that. But I still love you. Listen. Number three. I need to hurry up. The third enhancer 
of unity is called mutual honor. Mutual honor. Don't write honor. Mutual honor. Mutual honor. Let me finish up. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Can you, if you are getting blessed, shout a loud amen. amen. Let's read it as loud as you can if you can see. Ready? One, two, go. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Mutual honor. Honor cannot be one-sided. There cannot be unity when honor is one-sided. Are we together now? If Apostle Grace Lubega appreciates me and I do not reciprocate it, you see, there will be trouble. If Reverend Julian appreciates me and I do not reciprocate it, this is what has caused disunity in the body. There are people who only receive. They don't give. They trivialize the sacrifices of others, but they want the applause of everyone. Unfortunately, everyone, no matter how great and small, if sincere, are making great contributions that deserve to be recognized and appreciated. Remember my message yesterday? That the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, valued, and appreciated. When you downplay a man of God, yes, you may have more results than him. But it's too bad, it's too small a reason to look down on him. Honor must be mutual to be profitable. Philippians 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, reading to verse 4 quickly, fulfill my joy, Paul says, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Verse 3, it says, let nothing be done through strife. Body of Christ, hear this. Or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4. It says, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Mutual honor. You call me Apostle Joshua Selman, but you are a great man of God. I do not know you, but I appreciate you. I hear you are a great man of God doing, serving God wherever. Just to let you know that I honor you. In Africa, because of our background, we interpret that as reducing yourself. No, you don't do that. Don't look down on others. Don't make people uncomfortable because you suddenly appeared. Are we together? We do that as business people. We do that as pastors. It may be sincere, but we need to work on it. That's why sometimes you see me try to manage these things, you know. When you are stepping in, especially for some of us who God has really helped by his mercy. Sometimes you can't stop this. People appreciate you, but I always make sure that I don't give a negative feedback, a negative energy, that my presence should not bring intimidation to any man of God. For God's sake, we are laboring together. We are co-laborers. We may have different rankings in the spirit, justifiably so, but everyone should respect another. From the young boy having a little prayer group somewhere in Kenya, to the highest man of God, everyone serving the Lord whether in ministry or in business is deserving of mutual honor mutual honor if I meet her excellency even though I'm a man of God I must appreciate her God bless you as touching her capacity I meet elders I appreciate them a little boy one of these my young sons I don't know where he is look look at him here he walked up to me while I was standing in fact come and give me another hug come come give me a big hug this is my lovely son. I was, I was, do you know, I was, I was sitting there and he just walked up to me wanting a hug. Some of you will flog this boy because you are too anointed to hug a little child. Oh, no, no, I came for a service like this. Why should a little boy, you see, Jesus said, let the little children come to me. He says, and do not forbid them for the kingdom, for such God bless you, my dear. Go back to daddy, huh? Thank you. Are we together? Mutual honor. Leave this service today 
respecting everyone you see from the media people spouses respect yourselves husband don't return back home as alpha omega beginning and the end no sir no sir no sir no sir don't tell me this is africa there's a place for respect but respect must be mutual and let me balance it wife don't listen to me now and misbehave after this conference and credit your misbehavior to my sermon hallelujah let me have your attention we have to wrap up everybody say mutual honor, mutual honor. superiors and bosses and ceos go back to work on monday try this gather your staff for a brief 10 minutes meeting and tell them listen i just want to take a few minutes to appreciate all of you in this organization i know your labor and your contribution but i have learned you don't need to tell them you came for rima first tell them i have learned by superior mentorship i have learned to appreciate your valuable contribution just to let all of you know that i cherish you together as a team will take this organization to the next level you try it and watch what happens versus opening the office door and embarrassing someone older than you just because you employed him and insult the living daylight out of him as proof that the boss has come no mutual honor mutual honor mutual honor mutual honor Look at someone by your left and right and tell them, I honor you sincerely. Say it again, I honor you sincerely. I may not know your name, I don't know what you do, I don't know your level of success, but I honor you sincerely. Praise the Lord. Let's go to number four very quickly. Number four, number four, we have to pray. Number four, the fourth enhancer of unity is called forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness and forbearance ephesians chapter 4 please give us verse 31 ephesians 4 verse 31 forgiveness and forbearance kenya body of christ east africa africa listen to this let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice next verse please and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted uh-huh forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you there is nobody no relationship regardless what kind of relationship thrives without the fortitude to practice forgiveness for as long as you are relating with humans, there will be a need to forgive. Now, there is a difference between forgiveness and forbearance. Forgiveness talks of granting pardon to an offender. Tolerance means accommodating the limitation of that individual because it will happen again. <laughs> you need to have the capacity to both forgive and forbear i would always give this example teaching my people if a noisy person tells you sorry i won't talk again he does not need forgiveness he needs forbearance 10 minutes later he resumes such a person does not need forgiveness forgiveness and forbearance colossians 3 13 now let me tell you this i need to put a disclaimer reverend julian the value of forgiveness is when there is repentance when there is no repentance forgiveness will not profit the other person it may release you and free you the one communicating the forgiveness but in that overall process there will not be profit the value of forgiveness is when there is repentance remember i told you there are three gifts we receive at salvation still remember number one the forgiveness of sin 
Number two, the gift of righteousness. Number three, Zoe, the life of God. This is the progression. The three gifts that a believer receives at salvation is first the forgiveness of sins that paves way for you to receive the nature of righteousness and then with it comes the life of God. And there are many, many people who do not practice forgiveness. There's an African cliche, I think it's African, over my dead body. Do they say that in Kenya? Don't say it all. I can't forgive this person over my dead body, over my this and that, over my dead body. And then when you're about to go to bed, you say, God, forgive me. You know the things I've done. Just, just forgive me. Um, no. One of the highest demonstrations of a giving spirit is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a kind of giving. If the only thing you know how to give is money, you are not a good giver. Forgiveness is a kind of giving, a nobler, superior kind of giving. Do you know why? Because when you forgive, you usually forgive from a standpoint of pain. You don't forgive from abundance, you forgive from pain. Let me tell you this, pastors forgive one another. Children forgive your parents. Parents, forgive your children. Are we together? Subordinates, forgive your superiors. Superiors, forgive subordinates. There are people today who have 30 year old wars that will never end. I'm not talking of nation to nation, individuals. Even when they die, their children continue the war. Please let it end. Let a generation end that war. I don't know if it does happen and with all due respect, there are African clans today that have been fighting for forever. And all it takes to end that war is I'm sorry. I'm sorry does not mean you are weak. I'm sorry means you are wise. There are times you say I'm sorry not because you are the one who is wrong. It's because you are the one who is wise. It's because you are the one who is better enlightened. Mutual honor. Let me give you one last one. And then we're done. Mutual honor. Leave this place practicing honor. The fifth, and that will be the final key that is an enhancer to unity, is called the practice of intercession. The practice of intercession. First Timothy chapter 2, 1 and 2. When we learn to intercede for one another, it becomes an enhancer to our being united. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many men all men all men all men all men all men verse 2 the bible says for kings and for all that are in authority to the end that we including you the intercessor may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty many believers are part of the system that creates division within the body because we are not intercessors you will hardly criticize a person you intercede for intercession is a great cure to this hatred and all of these sentiments second corinthians 1 11 second corinthians 1 11 second corinthians 1 11 that they may be one second corinthians 1 11 it says ye also helping together how by prayer for us my god so one way to help people is to pray for them help them when you hear a church is in trouble help them not just by sending finances intercede pray for them when you hear that someone's business is failing you help by praying we also helping together by prayer, by prayer, by prayer for us. He said, I know that this shall turn for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus. Through your prayer, it shall turn for my salvation. 
through your prayer, not through your mockery, not through your mockings, not through your ill speakings. If we reduce half the time we take to gossip, to talk, to plant seeds of discord and convert that energy to intercession, it will become a force of cohesion within the body. We are experts at selling bad news, selling narratives, selling rumors. Have you heard? I hear that this pastor collapsed somewhere. Maybe he's about to die. How does that profit the body? Why not sow a seed of intercession? I may not know what is wrong with his life, his family, his church, his health, but I pray for him. Lord, for your name's sake, preserve your name over the life of this man. Preserve your name over the life of this intercessor. The believer who intercedes is the one who can easily walk in love. A body that intercedes for herself is the body that remains strong. Are we together? One final scripture. The practice of intercession. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians 1, 9. For this cause, Paul is speaking, we also, since the day we heard it, I like that scripture, it doesn't matter what you heard. Since the day we heard the news, our response was we do not cease to pray. Leave the other part. I just want to take the A part. From the day we had it, whether it was a rumor, from the day we had it, that a man of God is going through a family crisis. From the day we had it, that your child is now acting autistic. From the day we had it, our response was that we do not cease to pray for you. That is the believer's response. You hear that a family is losing loved ones, rain washed down a church, there's trouble somewhere, a man of God is going through some crisis somewhere. From the day that you hear it, your response is that you do not cease to pray. Do not become the promoter of the pain of another person. From the day we heard it, it doesn't matter what it is you heard. If you heard that Reverend Julian is doing a great thing, there's a great business, you know, he's opening up the, the Commonwealth platform. From the day you hear it, you sow that seed of prayer. Lord, it will work. Raise partners across Africa. Raise partners across Europe. Are we together? The day you hear that some man of God is sick, maybe battling cancer somewhere, don't just rejoice and say, and he says he has faith. That is a foolish believer's response. Wise believers in the kingdom, the day they hear anything, their first response is prayer. You bow your knees and you say, this man is a father in the land. Lord, let him transit with honor and nobility for the sake of those who look up to him. Let him not die the death that discourages the body. Preserve your name over the health of this man. This is how believers live. Who has learned something tonight? Enhancers of unity. We're about to pray. Number one, vision that comes through growth to agree on the same thing to see similar things in the spirit to attain a commendable level of light it enhances cohesion number two love genuine love number three mutual honor honor one towards another regardless social stratification regardless results regardless achievements number four the practice of forgiveness and forbearance and number five the practice of intercession i will stop here let's pray please rise up on your feet rise up on your feet when jesus prayed and said that we be one he saw conferences like this when jesus prayed he prayed that prayer confidently because he knew that one day a rima feast will be put together that will allow an opportunity to let this unity be attained that there are men and women of God as vessels unto honor that he will plant across several regions nations who will frontier this campaign for unity unity is not uniformity unity is not endorsing licentiousness unity is not all inclusiveness of rubbish 
believers have standards the standards must not be compromised under any ground please hold hands with someone by your left and right if you will and I want us to pray an honest prayer over Kenya over Africa over the body of Christ I've shared these things and you've heard me let us sow that seed of prayer in addition to all that we have learned from the vessels that have ministered through this conference and even tonight I like you to pray sincerely go ahead and pray the church in Kenya pray believers in Kenya pray politicians in Kenya pray businessmen in Kenya pray men and women of God pray captains of industry pray gatekeepers pray pray hold hands with someone as far as your hands can reach and let's pray it's time for the church to attain a state of maturity looking beyond our individualism trusting God for grace to be that generation that becomes the answer to the Lord's prayer that they may be one that they may be one a strong indomitable invincible army a strong family connecting from Kenya to Uganda to South Africa to Nigeria to Zimbabwe to Zambia pray that that purification begins in the house of God strategic kingdom collaborations across Africa across Europe across America across Asia that frontiers the program of God with greater efficiency pray for spiritual growth that will be of one mind in terms of spiritual understanding that those who are weak carrying lesser light that by mercy the Lord will reach down and lift them to a higher level of wisdom in the spirit that those who have been helped by God to see Clara that they will not be complacent but they will keep pressing to the deeper things of the spirit someone pray that the love of God be shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost we will love ourselves beyond the walls of denomination we will love ourselves beyond our levels of attainment in the spirit beyond the results that we command beyond the exploits that we command go ahead and pray the least will love the greatest the greatest will love the least pray for mutual honor that will restore respect one to another that will not trivialize the spiritual investments the economic investments the intellectual investments of one another that God will grant us the fortitude to honor and appreciate one another as touching our love and labor in the spirit as touching our love and labor in ministry as touching our love and labor in, in business as touching our love and labor in economics in politics someone pray the grace to communicate mutual honor mutual honor mutual honor now go ahead and pray receive grace to practice forgiveness father the grace to forgive the grace to forbear the grace to forgive the grace to forbear the grace to forgive hurts to forgive pains pains of yesteryears pains of yesteryears the grace to forbear the grace to forgive to walk by the law of love to walk by the law of love hallelujah the final point is prayer we are going to pray right now please I want you to contribute in this prayer your spiritual efficiency we are praying as one united family we'll start with Kenya the church over Kenya the political space over Kenya the economic space over Kenya we are going to pray Lord step in we call you a deliverer we call you a mighty God step in you are the Lord of Sabaoth stepping over Kenya spread that prayer to Uganda and all across East Africa take it to West Africa go ahead take it to South Africa begin to pray Lord step in 
over your church for your name's sake in the name of Jesus raise men and women men of wisdom men of fire men of character manifesting the fullness of Christ serving his grace with wisdom serving his grace with diligence go ahead and pray pray for the church in Kenya pray for the church in East Africa pray for the church in Africa from Nigeria to Ghana Cameroon Zambia Zimbabwe go ahead and pray that Jesus be lifted beyond men of God beyond the campaign of apostles and prophets and evangelists we desire to decrease in Christ that only one banner only one name be lifted and projected pray for Kenya let there be peace in Kenya pray for the government for wisdom pray for the parliamentarians pray for the presidency pray for the judges pray that righteousness and justice will become the core the creed over Ghana over uh, South Africa over Uganda over Cameroon go ahead and pray that the nations of Africa the mineirs of corruption that it will die in our lifetime that God will raise for himself noble men who fear God men of capacity men of integrity men who understand prosperity you're praying let's pray for Kenya in the name of Jesus Christ let the young men rise with spiritual understanding responsible young men and women business owners captains of industry who will frontier not just the program of God but the prophetic destiny of Kenya take a minute to pray we pray for every church we pray for the media we pray for the politicians we pray for the judiciary we pray for pastors we pray for the fathers in the land we pray for the next apostolic voices in Kenya we pray for the entrepreneurs the kingdom entrepreneurs the Nehemiahs the Josephs the Daniels the builders it's time for Kenya to rise it's time for Africa to rise it's time for the body of Christ to attain unto a higher level of grace and efficiency in the spirit hallelujah hallelujah we're still praying listen I want you to pray for every man of God who has been used here to bless you let it not be that after we have preached we ourselves will be cast away. are we together every man of God here has a ministry global ministries they are running and I tell you the truth Satan will not fold his arms as far as thwarting the testimony of God's people over his vessels are concerned, the fall of one will be a catastrophe to the body. Go ahead and sow seeds of prayer. Pray for every man of God. Mention them by name. Mention their ministries by name. The grace that keeps, the wisdom that protects, the wisdom that advances, the power, the staying power, the grace to remain. Sound in doctrine impeccable in wisdom stability of character go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart sow that seed of prayer over every man of God who has been used by God here in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray we're going to speak now in one minute together over the prayer request I ask you to bring your prayer request as a way of supporting you releasing our faith with you in prayer the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing if we can have the prayer the, the cards just just drop them anywhere at all just anywhere here so that will save time if we're able to bring them forward just drop them there that's okay hallelujah it says be anxious the word there is anxiety for nothing then it says in everything by prayer and supplication thank you it says let your request be made known no assumption he knows all things 
but he is only rich to them that call upon him are we together we are going to pray this right here ladies and gentlemen is the most accurate representation of your desires and mark eleven twenty three says what things soever ye desire when ye pray god bless you if you are yet to drop yours just lift it and, and we'll have um, so we'll save time there are many people can you just pass it to anyone by your left or right don't worry nobody's reading your request just pass it to anyone so you make it easy for the ushers we have just a minute or two to pray god bless you god bless you okay you want me to do that i thought of the time okay so let's let's get that to the altar please um gentlemen no 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 please please sir go ahead Go ahead. Everyone pray in the spirit, please. For the next one minute, we're praying in the spirit. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. God is not only a prayer hearing God, is a prayer answering God. A prayer answering God. A prayer answering God. A prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen, Kenya, please listen. Let me teach you something. Let me teach you something. There are three ways that God answers prayer. It's important, not just for you to know that God answers prayer. You can know how he answers prayer. Number one, by supernatural intervention. There are times that God can step in, like the miracles we witnessed. He steps in by his power and brings correction, creation, and all kinds of supernatural manifestations. Number two, God answers prayer through the ministry of men. The ministry of men this is one major way God answers prayer spiritual realities are converted through the ministry of men the word became flesh became flesh results can have their material expression when they partner with the ministry of men John chapter 5 and verse 7 the man who was at gates beautiful when Jesus met him and said, do you desire to be healed? His complaint was, sir, I have no man. I know where the water is. I know where the solution is. But the man that becomes a leverage to help me, I have no man. I have no man. There are many of us here. The answer to your prayer, listen carefully. The answer to your prayer depends on the ministry of men. The ministry of men promotion men dependent breakthrough men dependent increase even business exploits the reason why you are able to serve your value and it is received is because there is a man at the back end of that transaction men the third way God answers prayer is by causing you to grow I taught you this yesterday God answers prayer by causing the saints to grow many of the things we call prayer requests are growth dependent they were supposed to gravitate naturally to your life in the presence of growth for an heir for as long as that heir is a child he differed nothing from a slave even though he be lord of all there are many things you may not need to pray for if you contend for growth these are the three ways god answers prayers supernatural intervention the ministry of men and by creating an atmosphere for you to grow because when you grow you have capacity there are certain things that you can be given so once we are praying here we are not superstitious people we don't pray foolishly we pray with intelligence are we together while you are praying you you already have it at the back of your mind you may not understand the dynamics of that answer, but that there is a theology to answer prayer. Once you are praying, your heart and your faith is connected to the supernatural power of God. If it's a situation he needs to intervene upon supernaturally, then you expect that to, to happen. And once you are praying, you expect that you will use men. So you will leave this service looking out by faith. Where are the men who will be compelled by God? You are a man of God here. Let me tell you, the next level of your ministry is not just grace dependent. It is men dependent. Numbers 1 and verse 5. A scripture God gave me, sir. It changed my life forever. May it change someone's life now. Read with me. Just the A part. 
These are the names of the men who shall stand with you. There are always men raised by God to stand with you. When God sends you as a man of God, they have names. The men are not invisible. They have names. The names of the men ordained by God as financial partners, ordained by God as prayer partners, ordained by God as loyal and faithful sons, as co-laborers. These are the names. Do you know the names of the men God has ordained to stand with you? You may not know the names, but he knows them. But have it at the back of your mind that any vision that thrives, thrives because the individuals have mastered the art of drawing within their space by grace and intelligence the men who stand with you. Can we pray over this now? Please stretch your hands as an act of faith and begin to speak. I'll stand here by faith. I will not want to burden the ministers asking them to come. Usually I would do that so we'll pray together. But for sake of time, just stretch your hands and let's agree. This is a representation of your expectations. And the Bible says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, go ahead and pray. Make your contribution in righteousness. We are standing as a united body, praying over this request. We birth miracles by faith. Miracles by faith. Signs and wonders, miracles by faith, miracles by faith, miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance, miracles of restoration. Someone go ahead and pray. We are speaking this by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. We come boldly before the throne of grace. We obtain answers by faith. We obtain answers by grace we obtain answers by wisdom in the name of Jesus someone is praying we declare that you step in supernaturally visit families visit jobs visit businesses visit nations visit bodies in the name of Jesus come down like you did over Israel in Egypt as a result of the affliction of your people in the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. In their affliction, they cried unto him. Visit your people, O God, in the name of Jesus. Turn their mourning to dancing, their sorrow to joy. Give them a new song. In the name of Jesus, we place an anointing upon this request. And we decree and declare that there are answers, answers locating men, answers locating your people, answers by the spirit of the living God. We call for destiny helpers, helpers of destiny, men and women ordained to partner with the Holy Spirit in birthing answers to this prayer. We call them from the north, we call them from the south, we call them from the east we call them from the west in the name of jesus the son of the living god in the name of jesus christ and we decree and declare every legal hold that satan has that is making for this request to even be written by the power that raised christ from the dead we decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that legal access is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of prophecy I call for the men and women who must partner with the spirit to make for a release of answers may they come from the north may they come from the south may they come from the east may they come from the west some of them are businessmen may the lord bring them some of them are men of god may the lord bring them some of them are intelligent people diplomats captains of industry men with influence may they come in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ 
some of them are divine connectors may my God bring them some of them are men of influence may my God bring them some of them are gifted people may my God bring them some of them are burden bearers may my God bring them speedily in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah 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 we are wrapping up I want to speak over your life I'm standing in partnership with the grace that is upon our father upon the angel over this vision upon all the graces here represented hallelujah I want to speak over your life listen to me the prophetic is powerful powerful make no mistakes about it it is one of the systems that open seasons in the lives of people there are two dimensions to the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic the goal of that is to build faith are we together and God uses a vessel by word of knowledge and by the prophetic to bring direction to help coordinate your life to bring confirmation and to build faith but the most superior dimension to the prophetic is called the creative dimension where you use the power of words and program realities that have no business happening it's not like you are revealing what should happen when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing you see that now if you prophesy and say apostle you have a black bible that is revelation are we together but when you say there should be a black bible and a black bible comes that's not revelation that's creation and there are many possibilities that are needed in your life but are non-existent it takes the prophetic that can call things that be not favors that be not hmm. realities that be not you give them material expression listen it's like a movie director you pick realities in the spirit and by the power of the prophetic you give it frame within the life of an individual the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to appoint fix a date for their liberty priesthood affords the believer that privilege to stand in partnership with the holy spirit and to reprogram truths over the lives of men are you ready to receive I'm standing here as one privileged by God's grace haven't been shown mercy by God and upon the graces that are here represented I want you to receive and watch the wonder working power of the prophetic under the influence of the spirit in the name of Jesus I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead every door that has been closed over your life and over your destiny I speak to that door now in the name of Jesus be opened in the name of Jesus be opened doors of opportunity be opened doors of opportunity be opened doors of seasons be opened in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you that there be an impartation of the spirit of wisdom wisdom like you have never seen let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now wisdom in ministry wisdom in business wisdom in finances wisdom in leadership in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there is a grace that brings speed when Isaac Allah shalika paruziata, when Isaac met Jacob disguising to be Esau and said how come you have brought the venison so quickly he said it is because the Lord has brought it to me there are things men look for but there are things God can bring to you in the name of Jesus I pray for you may the God of all grace bring speed to your life speed in ministry speed to your accomplishments 10 years in one year 10 years in one year by the spirit of the living God 10 years in one year that by this time next year you'll be 10 times better 
ten times better I place grace upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ he said by you I can run through a troop by my God I can leap over a wall I declare strength the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is because your strength is small man of God receives strength strength by the spirit strength for the journey strength in business strength for the remaining months of the year in the name of Jesus Esther chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 the Bible says while the virgins were being prepared to see the king so that he would choose a bride from them verse 9 it says the young woman Esther pleased the king or pleased Haggai and she obtained favor the proof that she had favor was that he readily gave her KJV says he speedily gave her. Let me tell you the truth. Answers have timing. Not every time is convenient for every answer. There are answers that come too late. He says satisfy me early with your mercy. I'm still praying speed over you. In the name that is above all names. As an expression of the favor of the Lord. I pray for you. Speedy answers. Speedy manifestations. Speedy answers. Speedy manifestations. Speedy answers. Speedy manifestations. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four kinds of men you will always need in your life. Number one, divine connectors. They do not have what it takes to help you, but they know who has what it takes to help you. Number two, men of influence. They have built a track record and their credibility and their endorsement can become a leverage, an advantage for your acceleration. Number three, gifted men. Their assignment is to bring efficiency to your system. Number four, burden bearers. They don't move you forward. They stop you from going backward. If you lack these four kinds of men, you will fail woefully in life. Destiny actualization is highly men dependent. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, the one who has shown men mercy that these four categories of people beginning from tonight may they show up in your life may they show up in your life divine connectors may they show up in your life men of influence may they show up in your life gifted persons may they show up in your life burden bearers may they show up in your life in the name of Jesus two more prayers and we're done I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit I don't know what you have been taught about the Holy Spirit but ladies and gentlemen please hear me the Bible calls the Holy Spirit a helper the helper that paraclet is not a Pentecostal phenomenon you can fail alone but you and the Holy Spirit make an invincible team an invincible team many of you have not been trained to appreciate and to recognize the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have reduced him to falling down and just miracles, but there's more. It says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, that he will guide you. Even though you have truth, you have to be guided to use truth as a weapon for your profiting. Satan can use truth to kill you. You can fall in error because of truth. Truth is a weapon. It can be used by both Satan and God. Just because you have truth does not mean it will profit you. You need to be guided into all truth. That you use truth like a weapon and produce from it a life of victory. I want to pray for you that something will happen to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to be a man of God. Truly, he's the advantage that was given to the believer. The one who turns ordinary men to be signs and wonders. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will enjoy a rich walk with the Holy Spirit from tonight. In the place of prayer, 
in the place of fellowship in the place of worship may you hear his voice with clarity may he guide every step in your life bringing you guidance bringing you direction causing you to triumph in ever increasing dimensions that through him you will manifest through your life the glory that excels ever increasing glory in the name of Jesus Christ ever increasing wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ ever increasing glory in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 it leaves for us an apostolic model for growth and transformation I would not have done enough justice if we do not pray and I do not speak over you on these wise. It matters that believers grow. Growth in the kingdom is methodical. There is a theology to spiritual growth. You do not freelance growth. No. There is an exact formula like passing a product from one end of a machine and bringing out a superior product. A believer can be passed through a system of growth and the end of that believer will be a glorious believer, a powerful believer. Are we together? The apostolic model is given in verse 42 and they continued steadfastly, Acts chapter 2, in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Acts 6, 4, give ourselves continually, 6 and verse 4, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Media, Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, thank you, the, the ministry of the word. Hear me, Kenya, hear me, body of Christ. I'm going to pray for you now. You have to cultivate an appetite for the word. You cannot freelance the word, giving it five minutes, carelessly listening to a message and sleep and wake up and push it away and attain unto stature in the spirit. God is not a magician. The only kind of growth that is natural is biological growth. Every kind of growth is sponsored by your diligence in the spirit. I must pray for you. There are many people's prayer altar that has gone down, including preachers. There are many people's word study life that has gone down. The corporate fellowship, your appetite for spiritual things. I have to end my session by praying this prayer. Is the greatest gift any man of God can give you. The gift of prayer that your spiritual life becomes robust through your engaging effectively, methodically, consistently in the ministry of prayer, your word study, engaging the truths of God's word, go for high level spiritual illumination, read your Bible, study materials that are profitable for your growth, listen to teachings, speak the word, obtain grace to walk in obedience. Obedience, that's how you enter your rest. Are we together? So that we do not end this conference with tens of thousands of people and you only received without a responsibility component. The prayer I'm praying for you now is that in the name of Jesus, the hunger, because hunger is a gift and hunger is proof of health. When people fall sick, the first thing they lose is appetite. Some of you have lost your appetite. It's proof you are not healthy. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, the grace for the word, let it rest upon you. The grace for the word that you will love the word above your necessary food. Let that grace rest upon you. Be students of scripture in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your word study life. Again, the appetite to study the word, to know the word, to engage the word. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. I pray over your fire altar that the fire that has gone down, let it be fanned back to flames tonight in the name of Jesus. The grace to pray and to pray through. The grace to pray and to pray through till you are transformed, till you access mysteries, till you translate realities, till you give them frame in the place of prayer. I declare, let that grace be supplied you now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare 
that you will not neglect the gathering of believers as the manner of some are I pray for you anyone here who is not serious with church you are not serious with the convergence of believers let grace come upon you to be planted in a local assembly to be planted in an apostolic platform for your maturing for your growth in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you from all that you have learned tonight all that makes for unity as far as it depends on you let the grace be released over you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen was an altar call made sir okay so let me make an altar call since we did not make one hallelujah yesterday we made an altar call I'm sure that the man of God allowed since I was still coming up so we'll make an altar call we cannot waste this opportunity everybody please stand let me please request that you respect this moment it is a very solemn moment the greatest of all that would have happened here tonight you are in this place and from morning up until evening speaker after speaker you have heard me speak now and the Spirit of God is speaking to you that you need Jesus you need to make your ways right wherever you are from the farthest distance as far as my eyes can see for your sake will spare two or three more minutes I want to make this altar call and I want you to run I count one to five I want you to leave your seat and come stand right here in front of me and when this space is exhausted then you'll be requested to just remain where you are I'm counting one to five you need Jesus you need to make it right with Jesus wherever you are I count one to five please make sure that um, the ministers are covered protocol thank you very much wherever you are Kenya let's honor them as they come honor them as they come one come to Jesus you are saying apostle I need to make it right with Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus let's celebrate them as they come God bless you you can win that war tonight he's giving you a new story he's giving you a new beginning ushers can you direct them appropriately so that they come very quickly so that they come very quickly there are many who are coming from the farthest distances please bring them to the front in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you keep clapping they are coming it's quite a distance but God bless you too appreciate them I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus I release you from that demonic influence now now come quickly three keep clapping they are coming Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Please move to my left so that there's more space. You deserve the praise. Help me. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name, Jesus. God bless you please let me request that you all move we need more space can you do me a favor just occupy the spaces you don't have to stand in a line there's still space in front some of you move to the front thank you God bless you God bless you so that we don't have any congestions once the front is filled keep celebrating salvation genuinely genuinely coming to Jesus 
Blessed be the name of the Lord for this great harvest tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord for the many who are seeking Jesus sincerely. Sincerely. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Gentlemen, can I request that some of you move this way? Those of you who are here, please move this way so that we have a little more space. Can you do that for me? Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We still have so many coming. Whilst they are coming, please listen. All of you who are here, let me speak for one moment. Let me speak to someone who is watching by television. You are watching by internet, connecting. And you are saying, Apostle, does this include me? Yes. Here at Rima Fest 2024, we are trusting God for a harvest, and that includes you. You are saying, I need Jesus, but I'm watching from my home, my office, my device. Can I pray that prayer? Absolutely. You can make it right with Jesus right now. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal. Many of you are here rededicating your life. Some of you are here making a first time call. It doesn't matter what category you belong to. Please lend me your attention. Look at me. Coming out does not make you safe. There is a declaration that you make by faith. Believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth this is what translates to your salvation are we together so i'm going to lead you to pray this prayer mean it from your heart you're not reciting a poem after a man of god let it be a sincere sincere prayer and that with this prayer salvation becomes yours right now lift your right hand if you can for those who could not make it wherever just lift your hand still Say after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, right now, I receive your life, receive your life into, my into my spirit. I declare, I declare that, you savior, that you are my Savior, my Lord, my Lord and, my King. and my King. I declare, I declare that, the that the power of sin, of sin Satan, Satan hell, hell, and the grave, and the grave is, broken is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go from glory to glory, go from glory, to glory. and grace to grace. Grace, grace. Amen. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, the Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. This many have come declaring your lordship over their lives. I declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I decree and declare the grace to live the victorious Christian life. Let it be released upon you now. By this prayer, I declare that any operation of evil spirits, demon spirits, orchestrations of darkness that have laid claim over your life, by the authority of scripture, I declare they depart from your destiny now. In the name of Jesus, they depart from your destiny now forever. Satan has no legal hold over your life by the authority of the blood. I set you free in the name of Jesus. For the Bible declares that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I establish your liberty in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Now, please, all of you, look at me. There are a number of you, and I'm going to plead that you be orderly as you move. Let there be no stampedes, please. If there's anyone under the anointing, be mindful of them. Don't walk on them. I would request that you move to my right. There are counselors who have been trained to have a word for, with you and then to pray with you. And then you'll be back to your seat. Please let me request that you move to my right. That will be your left. Um, let's begin to appreciate them. All of you from the farthest distance, may God bless you. May God bless you.
Can you keep clapping as they move? God bless you. 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 Are you tired of clapping? Let's celebrate salvation tonight as they meet with the counselors. God bless you. It's a new day for you. Hallelujah. Whilst we're allowing them to move, um, please counsel us and protocol. Can we make that fast? Let's make that fast so that um, in a minute or two we can get them where they'll be counseled. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me use this opportunity and appreciate God's servant, Reverend Julian. Thank you, sir. I never take for granted the opportunity that you've given me to bring God's word and I equally honor your spiritual father and his dear wife. I honor you, sir. Thank you for the love, the honor. I want to appreciate one last time every man of God, particularly those who serve the grace of God here in Kenya. Thank you for giving this opportunity. And Kenya, I want to thank you again for receiving of this ministry. May the Lord bless you. May you go from glory to glory in the name of of Jesus we pray amen and amen are we good to go hallelujah okay just hold on just a moment let's let's have let's have them move and then I can come down and the next person can come up let's keep clapping while they move appreciate them appreciate them God bless you appreciate them All right one last time Kenya God bless you God bless you and we'll see when we see Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.